All right, everyone, we're going to get started. Uh, welcome to today's webinar, where we're going to introduce you to the newest SmartBear software product, Peer Review Complete. Reviewing and marking up technical docs and source code are crucial. It's a crucial activity for hardware and software teams so they can find issues early and reduce the amount of rework they have to do. But for some teams, it's still a big challenge to hold efficient peer reviews. Today, we're going to take a look at how software and hardware teams can share one tool, Peer Review Complete, to conduct reviews, find issues early in the product development process. We'll see how teams can work together instead of in isolation, learn from each other, find problems and defects, and design the best possible solutions. Before we get started, a few housekeeping notes. We will be recording this webinar, and we'll send out a copy of that recording so you can share it with any colleagues who were not able to make today's session. We do want to answer your questions. We encourage you to submit the questions during the presentation, and at the end of the presentation, we'll stop and answer as many questions as we can. To submit questions, just use the question and answer box in the lower right-hand corner of the GoToWebinar application. Today's presenters are James Wang. James has more than 25 years of experience in multiple aspects of business, from technical consulting to senior management, and is currently the Vice President of Peer Review Products at, Soft, at SmartBear Software. We're also joined by Justin Collier, who's the Senior Solution Engineer for SmartBear Peer Review Products, and focuses on understanding how to make sure our products can be quickly and easily implemented and still take advantage of industry best practices. At this point, I'd like to hand over the presentation to James Wang. Great. Uh, thank you, Bill. Uh, thank you, everyone, for taking the time to join us today. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, Justin, can you move on to the next slide? So today we will be uh, talking about our latest product offering, a, a newly branded sister product to co-collaborative uh, we call Peer Review Complete. Uh, this release is uh, really driven by our customers. Uh, they have run into uh, numerous challenges to really involve both uh, you know, the software and the hardware teams to adopt a standard peer review uh, solution. Uh, this is especially true in large enterprises where, for example, uh, achieving high levels of uh, CMMI is, uh, is critical to their business. Uh, we actually started uh, down this path with our 6.0 release. Uh, we, where we added a host of document review capabilities. Um, therefore, we, we feel that the tool is really not just for code reviews anymore. Um, we believe that the new branding really provides the right message as to the capabilities and where we want to focus uh, in the market space. So with the, uh, with the new branding, we wanted to uh, highlight the capabilities of the tool as being extremely valuable uh, in all phases of the product development cycle. So uh, basically, we, you know, starting from reviewing the requirements to design to architecture and all the way down the line to uh, actual source code, test plans, etc. So basically, any document that you, you have can be reviewed. Uh, and more importantly, this tool uh, really encourages collaboration of distributed and cross-functional teams which typically are now uh, really the norm in how enterprises build uh, new products. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, over and over again, uh, peer reviews have been really proven to improve the overall quality of the final product, uh, which is a key factor in, in customer satisfaction. So the earlier you can catch design flaws and defects, the, the lower the cost of quality. Um, so now in our current very competitive environment that we're in, uh, that advantage of higher quality and getting to market first and not having significant delays with your product development can mean the difference between success and failure. So with peer review complete, our many years of experience in making software code reviews effective and easy and fun can now be applied to the rest of the enterprise. So, I mean, we, it's obvious we all know that the tasks that are easy and fun make people more likely to participate, and that generates real value for the company. Um, it's, it's very common also for enterprises to, to have major quality initiatives, and, of course, measurements are key to continuous improvement. So our tool captures an extensive set of metrics that can give you the right visibility into where you need to focus uh, on your quality initiatives. Next slide. Uh, 
So now uh, let's take a look at one study that um, illustrates what we've been talking about. Uh, this is a study done by Christoph Eber and Capers Jones that they published in their recent article called Embedded Software, Facts, Figures, and Future. Uh, it was published by the IEEE Computer Society. Uh, as you can see, there are numerous technical document and code review techniques, uh, each with their own level of effectiveness. What I've done here is I've highlighted in bold uh, the areas where companies can use peer review complete to achieve those uh, terrific results. Uh, the point here is that there, there are many, many areas uh, within the entire development cycle where peer review can contribute greatly in reducing the number of defects and increase the overall product quality. Next slide, please. So at, at its most basic level, the workflow for conducting a uh, review is fairly simple. The first step is to collect the materials for the review, and we call that the, uh, the planning phase. And we can do that um, uh, automatically for you. Uh, the second step is to create a new review and assign reviewers to start their inspections. So if there are no defects or issues, uh, then the review can go straight to the complete state and, and we're done. Otherwise, uh, if there are defects or issues, then the reviewer could uh, return the review back to the author for rework to complete the outstanding issues. Uh, this could repeat depending on how many issues were discovered in the subsequent inspections. So at this time, let's uh, take a look to see how peer review uh, does this. So I'm going to turn it over to Justin to demonstrate the product. Justin? Thanks, James. Uh, as uh, Bill mentioned and James mentioned, my name is Justin Collier. I'm one of the uh, senior sales engineers here at Smart Bear. And what I'm going to be doing today is walking through uh, peer review complete. Uh, we're going to be going through basically a demo of the tool and uh, we'll be looking at several different types of files as we go through that process. Now, to start off with, uh, Peer Review Complete is really kind of done in two components. There's a server-side component, uh, which is responsible for the web UI, which is what we're looking at currently. And then there's also a client-side piece, which has um, the ability to do a command line interface, as well as uh, a GUI client that you can utilize uh, for creating reviews as well. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, that here in just a little, in just a little while. Uh, the first step to creating a review is, by, is to come up here and click on New Review, and you end up on this screen here, which we see. And I've actually pre-populated a lot of this information, uh, and the reason being is because I wanted to go ahead and get some uh, materials attached to this review uh, before we got started. So we can see we've got basic information up here at the top. We have our list of participants. Uh, one of the important things to note about the participants list is we have several different types of roles. And we can see an author here. We have a reviewer here. And if we choose the drop-down menu, we actually have an observer role as well. Now, this is for an informal type of review. If you have formal reviews, then you also have an additional role called a moderator. And these are configurable items uh, within the administrative features of the tool. And we'll show uh, and talk about the admin section uh, towards the end. But at this point, I have a, an author and I have a reviewer. Uh, you can have as many reviewers as you need for, uh, for this review. In this case, we're just going to do one to keep things simple. Uh, and then as we scroll down, we have a list of materials here as well. Now, there's several different ways to attach materials to the review. One option is to click on Attach File over here on the right-hand side. And that allows you to upload files into the review. You can also use the command line client as well as uh, the GUI client, which you can see in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. Uh, it allows me to go in and attach files to a review. Now, this GUI client is also responsible for integrating into uh, SCMs. And we actually support 16 different SCMs. And so you can use that client uh, to do that integration for you as well. Now, the last way to attach materials to a review is done through something we call print to review. Uh, this is actually a print driver that was created uh, for the review process. And what this allows you to do is take documents. In this particular case, we're looking at a Word document, but it may be an Excel spreadsheet or any other number of, uh, of different file types out there. And as long as you can print that file, you can print it into a review. And so we're going to do that now. 
Um, we're just going to click print. It'll automatically print this file into the review process, and we'll see here uh, we have the ability to add the document to the review. Now we could create a new review, or we can just add it to the existing review, and we're going to do that now. We've got review number 10, PRC demo, and this is the, the review that we happen to be working on. So we'll click finish. It'll automatically load uh, this file in, and we'll just do a quick refresh. And now we can see that that file has been attached. Now the last step for the review process and to kick off a review is to click on the next step section and to click apply and begin review. So we'll do that now. So now the review is started. Now one of the things I want to make sure that I point out is, is we're looking at Bob Evans' screen. This is the gentleman who is the author of the review. And he has selected the reviewer to be Justin Collier. And again, you can have as many reviewers as you need. Now, Justin is going to be getting a notification uh, to let him know that, hey, you need to start a review. Uh, Bob has invited you to perform a review of his materials. Now, Justin can get that notification in several different ways. Uh, one option is to receive an email. Another is an RSS feed. If he's logged into the web UI, he's going to see that as a notification. And then additionally, uh, the icon in the bottom right-hand corner of the system tray can show him that he has to perform a review as well. Uh, and all of those different pieces are configurable uh, based on administrative settings. Now, what I'm going to be doing at this point is I'm going to slide in another web browser here. And you'll be able to see that. We're now looking at Justin Collier's screen. And so he is the reviewer, and we can see that here. Uh, his role is to be the reviewer for Bob Evans' review. And we can do that now. And so we're going to go ahead and click on View. This is going to pull up the review materials. And we'll expand that so everybody can see it real well. Uh, all of the same information that Bob defined just moments ago, Justin's going to see here on his screen. Now as we scroll down, we can see uh, the review materials that have been attached to this review. Now a couple of things to point out is we see that these files are in their initial state, but then we have two files in a reworked once state. And I did this intentionally so that way we can illustrate kind of a side-by-side -side comparison of two different uh, files that have been modified. And so we'll show those here in just a few minutes. But let's begin the review process. We'll start with a PDF file. So I, by clicking on the PDF, we open uh, the review for this PDF file, we'll expand that here. And so we can see that PDF. You'll notice that there's a couple of different items down here on the bottom. Uh, we can flip between pages by clicking on the arrows. We can also uh, zoom in and zoom out using the magnifying glasses for this. Now, regardless of the type of review that you're doing, whether it's a PDF or uh, an image file, it doesn't make any difference uh, what that material is. All of the options are really the same over here on the left-hand side. We can see here the overall section, and this is allowing you to put in overall comments about the file. You know, uh, something along the lines of, hey, Bob, you know, uh, this looks good. And so that's just a, a, an overall comment about the document. We can submit that comment here. The other thing that we can do is make comments about specific items. And using push pins within a document review, it allows us to select an area. We automatically determine where that location is based on the coordinates. And then we can make a comment about that. Uh, we could say something like, uh, nice key features. And we can submit that as a comment. Now the last thing that you can do in any of the reviews is uh, an issue. Um, this is actually a configurable item. Uh, sometimes it's referred to as a defect or a bug. It, it's really something uh, that is defined by you uh, and by your organization. But the idea with it is, is it's in the context of the review. And this is something that we would want the author to address before we were to move on any further within our uh, our design phase or, or if we're working on code and we re rework that code. So again, this issue is something in the context of the review only. And so uh, what we'll do is we'll, we'll select something here. We'll just go to page two as an example. And we'll put a push pin and we'll click on add issue. And we'll add that issue here. We might say, hey, um, you know, please add uh, copyright. Now we can select severity, major, minor. This is a configurable field, uh, and we'll just choose one here, uh, as well as type. And again, these are custom fields that you get to, to tweak and, and uh, set up for yourself. And we'll just choose that as a text, and we'll submit this as a new issue. And so at this point, Justin is the reviewer, and he has finished reviewing the PDF file. So what he can do is he can click Done. 
and he can move on to the next file. You can come in here and select that next file and, and begin to work on it. And we'll open up a circuit diagram, a GIF file here that we can take a look at. Uh, just like the PDF that we were working on uh, a moment ago, we can place push pins on this document. Uh, we can scroll around, we can zoom in and out, uh, you know, all of those same features uh, that we would have had within uh, the PDF. But we can place a push pin, we can make comments, add issues, um, you know, please uh, you know, double check, uh, pin config. And we can submit this as a comment or as an issue, it's up to us, uh, within the context of this review. Now again, we can click done and we can go to the next file uh, and choose that from the list or we can use the arrows up here in, uh, towards the middle of the screen. By clicking on that, it moves us automatically into the next file. Here we see uh, the Word document that we used the print to review capabilities uh, for just a few minutes ago. Uh, and again, we can make comments, add push pins just like we did with the PDF. Uh, and here's that PDF review that we did. We'll click Next, and now we're looking at uh, the Java file that we have attached here, and you can see that is Prime Utils Java. Now this operates slightly different than uh, the document review capabilities. Within the document reviews, uh, we're actually placing push pins on the document, and that's how we keep track of the location of the comments. Within a, a text file, like we're seeing here in this Java file, uh, we are actually making comments based on the line number. And so here we can come in and say, okay, line number 28, uh, we can say, um, you know, why did you add uh, additional lines, right? So we can add that as a comment uh, within the context of this review, and it automatically flags that and keeps track of that based on the line number. Now you'll notice that on the left-hand side, we're seeing things that uh, this is the original file. Uh, and on the right, we have proposed changes that we're making. We can see in red, these are items that have been removed. Uh, in green, we've got additions. In this yellow highlighting, we can see that, okay, we went from a float to an int. Uh, and then down towards the bottom, we can see addition uh, of uh, some comments here. And so, again, you're making these comments uh, based on the line. You can make overall comments like we did within the PDF. And we can also add issues. And so we'll add an issue here for uh, line 44. So let's do that now use k plus equals 2 instead. And again, we select our severity and our type, and so we'll just pick these at random here. Uh, and, and this is something that you do have the ability to go in and change to meet your business needs. And at this point, we'll submit this new issue, and we'll move on uh, to the next file. Justin's finished reviewing this one, so we'll click on next file. Now, the next type of file is an image file. And we actually have uh, two different images, though they're the same, right? Uh, we're looking at a star. Uh, this star happens to be taken with, uh, this picture was taken with the Hubble telescope. On the left, we have a picture of that star. It was taken in September. Uh, and on the right, we have a picture that was taken in December. And so we can see that there's a slight uh, difference to the way that those two images look. And so you can have these side by side. And you can compare them visually like this. And you can, again, add push pins just like we did a few minutes ago. Uh, the other option that you have is to change your view, and we can actually go with an over-under view, and we'll scroll down, we'll just zoom out a touch here. We'll notice that on the bottom section we have the ability to show the left image or the right image. And so the other thing that you can do with this is you can use the slider to fade the images out. So we can fade from one image to another, uh, and allowing us to easily compare those two images. Uh, just by using the slider feature. And again, we can place comments using the push pins. Now at this point, Justin's gone through all of the different files that are part of the review. And we can see uh, there are no next files, and so we've finished that. And so what we'll do is we'll click Done. So Justin's finished doing that review. He's reviewed all of the files. And the next step is for him to say, hey, uh, I'm moving on. I finished doing the review. And we can see that down here at the bottom of the screen. And so we'll go ahead and click Finish. And now Justin is done performing the review on that file. So we'll slide this out of the way. And now what's happening is, is Bob, the author, is being notified, hey, your reviewer Justin has finished doing the review. And it's your turn now to go in and take a look at the comments and, and uh, address the items that, that might have been brought up in the context of the review. And so what we can see within uh, Bob's screen here 
is all of these comments, the little yellow bubbles with red exclamation points, uh, these are the comments that were made against the files uh, as Justin went through and performed the review. And so we'll begin to take a look at those now. Uh, we'll open up page one here. We have the circuit diagram. Now the interesting thing is you'll notice we can't see the push pin currently. But the nice thing about uh, peer review complete and, and the way that we keep track of things is all of this stuff allows you to kind of hyperlink or jump straight to uh, the location. And anytime you see a comment, you can always click on that comment and it'll automatically bounce you down to where you need to be in order to see that comment. And so we can see it just says, hey, please double check the pin config here. So uh, we can look at that and we might just say, hey, that's, that's great. Uh, and we'll mark this comment as being read. And we'll proceed to the next file or we could click done uh, either way. We'll just click next file here. Now uh, we can see here that Justin didn't make any comments uh, about the Word document, so that one was okay. And now we come to the PDF file. Uh, here we see several comments. Uh, we have an overall comment, hey Bob, this looks good. Uh, that's great, we'll just mark this one as red. Uh, we also have nice key features, so he's happy about that. We'll mark that as red. But now we need to take a look at something that's been defined as an issue on page two. And again, we can click on this and it'll automatically dump us down to page two. And we can just see that he wants us to add a copyright information. And so we'll say, okay, great, I'll do that as part of my review work. But we'll mark this file as read as well. And we'll continue on to the next file. Now here we have uh, the files that we had in review. Uh, again, the same kind of process, except for now it's being done by line. Now one of the features I'd like to point out is instead of seeing a side-by-side -side comparison, we're actually viewing this text in, in over-under style. And so I could always come in uh, to my options and change that to a side-by-side -side if I wanted. Uh, the other thing that you'll find here uh, is the compare feature. And this is any, t any file that's been uploaded, we're going to keep track of that. We can see the first upload, the latest upload. Uh, you'll have the ability to go in and select which files you're comparing. Uh, in this case, we only have two, so we'll just compare those two files. We can see here on line 28 that a comment has been made, why did you add lines, and you go, oh gosh, I didn't mean to do that, whatever. Uh, we'll mark this as red. We can see on line 44 that uh, we have an issue that we want uh, to address or that Justin wants us to address. And we, we can see that he wants us to, to change this to K plus equals two. And so we can do that, we'll mark this red as well. Now we can continue to go through all of our files until we're done. And then at that point, we would click done. Now, uh, because or in the essence of time, what we're going to do is we're just going to modify uh, the .java file. We'll make the changes that uh, were, uh, were uh, specified by Justin, and we'll actually re-upload that file to the review, and we'll kind of walk through uh, what that uh, process looks like. So let's minimize this. We'll go into the Prime Utils Java file. We'll edit this file. We'll uh, get rid of the extra spaces that we added. We didn't mean to do that. Uh, we'll change this to K plus uh, equals to, and then we can save this file off. Now we need to upload that file to the review. So we'll come here, we'll click on upload. We'll attach the file, we'll choose our file. This is just one way to go about attaching files. Again, uh, we could have used the command line for this or we can use the GUI client. Um, for now, we'll just choose this, attach that file to the review, and we'll click apply. Now that we've gone in and we've reworked our files, uh, the next step uh, that Bob needs to perform is to click on Defects Fix, Proceed to Verification. And then this tells Peer Review Complete, hey, it's time to move on. Go notify Justin that he needs to come back and take a look at the files that we've addressed and fixed. And so we'll slide Justin's screen in now. We'll slide his web browser over, open that up. We'll click View here. And we'll begin to take a look, uh, look at the files. And we can actually see, okay, wait a minute, this file has been reworked twice. So we know that Bob has gone in and made changes to the file. So let's go take a look at those. We can see, okay, here's the changes uh, that he made. He removed these two lines. And if I wanted to, I could click on line 43. It would actually just jump me straight to it. And he made the change that we had suggested. Now, I'm actually going to minimize this real fast. I want to show a feature here within the tool. And so let me slide this out of the way. We'll click View. And we're going to open up the same uh, prime uh, dot, uh, prime .java file um, over on Bob's screen. And we're also going to 
open that same file here within Justin's view. And again, he's the reviewer. So on the left, we have Bob. He's the author. And on the right, we have Justin, and he's the reviewer. Now, if we were to click on and make a comment, it doesn't matter what it is, um, you know, nice job, and we submit that comment, Peer Review Complete will automatically, and you can see that on the left-hand side here, make the updates to Bob's screen. And so this allows us to chat back and forth about the file that we're reviewing, if we happen to be in the review at the same time. And this allows us to move through the review process very quickly. However, if Bob wasn't in or Justin wasn't in and comments are being made, those comments simply get flagged in yellow and get threaded out. And so the next time I do come in and I want to read those comments, I can pick up right where I left off. So I wanted to make sure that we illustrated that feature uh, here within uh, the peer review complete process here. So let's, uh, at this point, uh, Justin has looked at these files. We'll go back to kind of finishing out the review. Uh, Justin, the reviewer, has looked at the files. Uh, Bob's made the changes. We're happy with those changes. We'll go in and we'll mark this as being fixed. So this issue uh, has been addressed. We don't have to worry about it anymore. And so I'm going to click Done here. Let's get Justin's screen back in. Uh, the last item, we'll notice we still have a, an issue that's been opened uh, against the PDF file. We'll open that file up. And remember that we had asked uh, Bob to go in and add copyright information to the PDF file. And let's assume that Bob had done that and he had uploaded his file. Well, then we would be able to come in. We would be able to see his copyright information had been added. And we could mark this as being fixed and uh, finish out the review process. So we'll do that now just uh, to illustrate what this will look like. So we'll click Done. Uh, Justin, again, needs to say, hey, we're finished, we're moving on uh, with the review. So he'll click Finished. We'll minimize this and slide it out of the way. And Bob's screen uh, will automatically refresh. We just saw that a moment ago. Uh, again, any additional comments that might have been made about that file. And the last outstanding task that Bob needs to perform would be to, uh, to actually commit those changes. Uh, and, and now the review has been completed. And so uh, for the sake of this, we'll actually just dismiss this review and we'll dismiss those changes. So that's the workflow, kind of start to finish, uh, and that's only reworking the file once, kind of back and forth. Again, you may have several reviewers that are participating, uh, an observer maybe, a, you know, just a, a junior person who you want to have participating, and they can see and, and see how you guys work and what you're doing to files, uh, but they're not actually impacting the workflow of the review. Uh, and again, we can go back and forth as many times as we need to uh, until all of the items and issues have been addressed. And that's the process uh, for the workflow within the review. Now let's take just a few minutes to talk about uh, some reports capabilities as well as uh, some administrative features within the tool. Um, we have several uh, reports items, and we'll click on reports. Uh, a bunch of built-in pre-defined uh, reports that are made available. Uh, you'll see these here. Uh, we can actually click on one of these reports uh, and, deal, uh, and drill down. So we'll just do review ID 10. That happens to be the review that we just, uh, we just did. We can save that, and now we have all of the participants, the issues that were logged, how many issues we found, you know, how many uh, and how fast we went through that review, and all of the information, comments, and everything about this particular review. So this is one style of report. Uh, we'll go back over to reports, and we'll do recently completed reviews. We'll notice now that we have columns made available to us. We can see those here. So we can check off the boxes and add columns, remove columns. We can also add filters. So if I want to filter out based on uh, a group, or if I want to do it based on an author or a reviewer, I have that capability as well. And then we can run this report and, and get that information and the results here. Now you'll also notice here that we can save this off as a CSV. We can print it. Uh, you'll see the SQL here. So this is the actual query that was used uh, to pull up that report. You'll notice that. Uh, we do publish this information for you, uh, the schema, so you can go in and if you wanted to use an external tool to create reports outside of uh, doing it here within the tool, you've got that capability as well. And we'll close this out. So from a reporting standpoint, it's extremely flexible. It allows you to get all of the information out that you might want to have uh, to track how you're doing within your reviews and is it helping you to, to perform better and so on. And then the last thing that I want to take a moment to show is the administrative section. We'll click on admin here. Um, this is 
uh, a very configurable tool. Uh, you'll notice that just within this general section, I, I scroll uh, what seems for days here and all of the different items that I can scroll through and, and allows me to change. I can change uh, the metrics and you know whether or not I have review deadlines and so on. Um, so extremely flexible. Um, we talked about uh, defect labels and we were talking about issues. Um, this is uh, a, a, a configurable item. I changed it to read issues. If you wanted it to say defect or uh, any other things that you might want to have uh, it labeled as, you can do that here. You also notice that you can create groups and uh, you can create your custom fields. We talked about those. Um, you can create roles within the tool as well. So um, you may have um, the need to, to build out templates within your reviews um, if you have different groups uh, and those groups need to follow different templates and rules uh, then you can set that up for them as well. So you'll see here a lot of different configurable features within uh, the utility. Now with that, that really uh, concludes the peer review complete demo and, and kind of workflow and how everything works. Um, what we'd like to do at this point is uh, open it up to questions and take some time to answer those. Uh, for everybody. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Justin and James. Uh, like Justin said, this is a great time to submit your questions. Um, just use the question and answer feature in the lower right-hand corner of the GoToWebinar application. Uh, we have had a couple of questions come in during the course of the presentation that we can start with. Um, the first is for James, uh, and it asks, uh, how is Peer Review Complete different than Code Collaborator? Sure. Um, the the core uh, functionalities are uh, are the same between the two products. Uh, what we see uh, this is the the initial point where the uh, the products will start to diverge, and our plan is to uh, continue to enhance the document review uh, capabilities to the peer review complete uh, product. Um, uh, as branded, and, and the improvements will continue uh, as part of that uh, offering. So um, look for a future announcement for uh, new capabilities. That's great. And sort of a follow-on question for James in regards to that is that if I'm an existing Code Collaborator customer, is there a way to sort of upgrade over to peer review complete? Sure. Sure. Um, at our next uh, maintenance release for uh, peer review complete, uh, which should be out uh, within the month. Uh, we, we will have the ability for our customers to upgrade from their current co-collaborator installation to peer review complete and uh, retain their entire history of reviews so you'll have all the data and all the metrics that you uh, care about. Okay, great. Uh, we've got one question uh, for Justin and it asks about the printer review capability. It asks, um, Printer Review works for Windows operating system. Uh, is there a recommendation for how Mac users should use uh, that capability? Sure. Yeah. So from a from a Mac standpoint, uh, the Printer Review feature is currently built for the Windows platform. Uh, but with that said, uh, your ability to go in and review any type of document uh, is available to you within Peer Review Complete. And so the best practice within uh, the Mac environment is to convert uh, the item that you want to review into a PDF. And there's a number of different free uh, tools and utilities available for you that you can then attach to the review uh, for uh, within Peer Review Complete. Okay, great. Um, we've got a couple of questions that have come in. Uh, one, Justin asks if we could uh, look at the custom field screen again. Absolutely, uh, yeah. Let me, uh, get, let me get the, that the options up. that are available there. Yeah, let's get that pulled up. Um, okay, switching on here, you guys uh, should now at this point be able to see uh, peer review complete, and we'll go over uh, to review custom fields as an example. Um, the overview field happens to be a custom field. Let's drop that down. Uh, we can see it's a string field. Uh, we've got a title. Is it visible? Description, default values, length, and so on. Um, if I wanted to create a new custom field, I can do that. And this is within the context of the review. Of course, there's also the participant custom fields and the defect custom fields. And so uh, let's take a look now at defect custom fields. Uh, we'll notice that we had severity and type. We saw those as we went through the review, uh, but now I can choose uh, to create another one as well. We've got a string, single line, multi-line, drop down, and multi-select list, and of course titles and descriptions. And you can configure those lists to meet your needs. 
Okay, that's great. Uh, the next question I think is probably best answered by Justin. It asks, um, does peer review complete interface with SAP or Team Center? Yes, yeah, so uh, as far as integrations and interfacing uh, with other utilities, uh, the way that we perform that now is through triggers. Um, and basically, what it allows you to do is, is any time you change phases or states within the review process, uh, you can perform some action. Um, and basically, those are done through triggers. Um, and so that is kind of a script that you run based on the fact that you've changed uh, from one phase to another within the review. So that's one option from an integration standpoint. And then in addition to that, uh, we also have the ability to link out to those items uh, by using an automatic links feature, uh, which uh, uses expressions. Uh, and we can create that here. Uh, we can see uh, the URL. We've got regular expressions, and we can define those links. Uh, and link out to those items from here. So that's how the integration to uh, third-party utilities is done outside of our integration into SCMs. Great question. Okay, that's great. We've, we've got a follow-up uh, in regards to the print to review feature, um, probably for Justin. It asks, uh, is there an advantage to print to review compared to printing to a PDF and then uploading the PDF? For instance, can users download and print documents uploaded using the printer review capability. Yeah, so um, you have the ability, regardless of how you attach that file to the review, you have the ability to pull that file down. Um, and so um, as a reviewer, if I want to pull a file down, I can, I can simply go in and, and click on the download option while I'm reviewing that file. Um, and let me see if I can't uh, pull up. Uh, let me slide this in. You guys I should now at this point be able to see that schematic. Uh, you'll notice that there's a download feature here at the very top, and that will allow me to download this GIF file. So regardless of how it is you attach the file, you'll have the capability uh, to pull that file back down if that's something you want to save off locally for yourself. Okay, that's great. And we've got one last question, and I think it's for Justin. It asks, does peer review complete work with hardware descriptor languages? Yeah, so uh, Peer Review Complete is extremely flexible, and basically what we have is the ability to perform reviews on any text-based uh, programming language. Um, and then we take that a step further with some specific languages. Uh, I want to say that there's like a list of, of 12 or 15 um, that we do syntax highlighting for. And so uh, that's a feature um, that we can also add syntax highlighting for other languages uh, that you may be interested in. Uh, but we actually have a full list of supported languages uh, out on the corporate site, uh, just smartbear.com, uh, and you can take a look there at all of the different supported languages. But I mean, it ranges from uh, everything from XML to PHP to, to C++ as an example. Okay, we've, we've actually got two last minute questions that have come in. Uh, the first asks, um, I've upgraded my code reviewer to peer review complete. Do I need to reconfigure my SQL database? Is that a complex process? Um, to be honest with you, uh, from my standpoint, James, you may uh, be able to jump in. Um, I have not done uh, the upgrade path specifically from Code Reviewer to Peer Review Complete. From a database standpoint, what I can tell you is uh, we have a lot more flexibility uh, with the databases uh, within Peer Review Complete. And so depending upon the size of your organization, uh, we'll have some determining factor as to whether or not you should change your databases. Um, but again, from a database standpoint, we support uh, MySQL, uh, Microsoft SQL Server, as well as Oracle. Um, and so it's really kind of dependent upon your organization, what you have access to, and what you're comfortable managing and running. Right. It, it, it's our intent that when we have the upgrade capability release as part of the maintenance that the Database upgrade is a seamless operation. Of course, if you go through that process and have uh, questions, where you know, our support is more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. Sure. Okay. Well, we've got one last question, and uh, it comes in two parts. Um, can a review have more than one author and involve multiple documents? That's part one. Um, and then part two is, is there a way for uh, reviews to be um, participated in by customers or clients who might be outside of the actual sort of um, uh, organization. Sure. Um, so 
from a review standpoint, you're going to have an author, and then you can have multiple reviewers. Um, those reviewers, depending upon how you set up your preferences, can attach files of their own if they need to. Um, so when we did the print to review capability earlier, we actually added that file as Bob, uh, who was the author, but uh, Justin, who was a reviewer, could have just as easily added that file into the review process. Um, so as far as multiple authors, no, um, multiple reviewers, or if you want to have uh, observers of people who aren't actually impacting the workflow of that review, uh, you can add them as well. Um, and then the second part of that question, um, and, and just state that for me one time to make sure that I, I get this right here, uh, Bill. Sure, yeah. Is there a way for um, clients or customers who aren't inside your company to uh, participate in reviews in some way? Say sure. If you had a partner who uh, was in Japan. Okay. Yeah. So the way that Peer Review Complete works is again we have kind of two components: the server side and the client side. And from the server side, it's the web piece that we've been looking at and performing the reviews against. Now that web piece also has to tie to the database, which we briefly mentioned moments ago. And so as long as your uh, contractors, maybe or outside vendors, have access into this web page that you uh, are are providing for them, right? I mean, as long as they have access to the server that Peer Review Complete resides on, and then they can go in and perform reviews. Um, and you can create an account for them so that they can go in and do that as, as, as you can see here, uh, user options over here on the left hand side within the site wide administration. So uh, the answer to the question is yes, uh, they don't have to be within your organization to perform the review, but uh, you do have to make sure that this, uh, this server is exposed to them. Okay, that's great. Well, uh, James, Justin, thank you very much. Thank you everyone who was able to attend today. Um, we do have a brief survey at the end of the uh, webinar. It would be great to get your feedback on uh, the, your experiences today and also hear about any future topics that you'd want to see us cover in upcoming webinars. Uh, at this point, I would like to end today's webinar and just say thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you.